Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got another tank review lined up for you guys. Yeah, I'm pumping these out quite rapidly now but with these times 5 events going on and so on, I research a lot of tanks very quickly and that means I need to sell quite a few tanks to get new tanks and before I sell them, obviously I want to give you my opinion on them and some advice how to play them properly and that's exactly what we're going to do about the IS-2 today. So the IS-2 is a tier 7 Chinese heavy tank situated here in the line that leads up to the 113, an absolutely amazing tier 10 heavy, one of the strongest in my opinion, and I can't wait to get my hands on it. But unfortunately, or well not really unfortunately, because the IS-2 in its own right is a pretty strong vehicle actually. But anyway, I have to play through this and IS-2 is actually very, very similar, not to say identical, with another tier 7 heavy tank in the game, and that is the tier 7 Soviet IS. And that's simply because the Soviets sold the IS to the Chinese, because at this early stage of the People's Republic of China, they didn't have their own tank development yet. So obviously the IS-2 plays very, very similarly to the Soviet Joseph Stalin, but slightly different there are some tweaks to it uh, obviously it gets its chinese typical bad gun depression but also has got a few advantages so in this video i will be telling you the pros and cons of this tank i'll be going over some advice how to play it properly what crew skills and equipment and ammo loadout to use and uh, then i'll be showing you some good replays that hopefully showcase how you can use this tank to its highest effectiveness on the battlefield so that you get good credits and experience and have a fun time driving it. Before we have a look at the stats, I first of all want to take you through the research of this IS-2 tank so that you guys know how to research this tank the most effectively and don't waste any experience. So we start this vehicle off with actually a pretty alright stock grind. The stock gun is a 100mm which is alright at tier 7 I guess, but really you want to get your hands onto this upgraded 122mm gun as quickly as possible. The great thing is you do not need the upgraded suspension at all on this tank really so what you can just do is steam through this entire gun branch get the best 122mm gun right here and then later go to the turret after that because the turret gives you some more health and that's very useful now these two guns are actually very similar you don't necessarily need to upgrade to this gun immediately after you've researched this gun you could for example also just go for the engines and then get this gun later on because actually these guns are pretty similar the only difference being a improved rate of fire on the second gun so uh, anyway the way i did it is i just went through for the guns then the turret then i upgraded the engine and then the radio and i decided to skip the suspension because i just want to get through to the 113 as quickly as possible but if you find this tank enjoyable and want to really improve your experience as much as possible while playing it then uh, probably unlocking the tracks would be useful because as we will see in a second they actually give you quite a few improved stats as well. Now a good news as well is that the second best engine and second best radio both carry over from the Type 58. So after having discussed the modules now let's have a quick rundown of the stats. I'll be comparing this vehicle obviously to its Soviet competitor the IS and also to its American counterpart the T-29 to see how it stacks up against some of its peers. First of all we can see that actually the DPM of the IS-2 and the IS are identical and the reason for that is because they both use the same gun so actually all of the gun stats will be exactly the same. The DPM is pretty decent for a tier 7 heavy tank especially considering that this vehicle has got really high alpha damage so you get best in tier alpha damage among the heavy tanks but you also get acceptable DPM obviously not being as good as say a Tiger's DPM but still pretty decent at just shy of 2000 and leaving its American competitor which is probably the most similar tank outside of the Soviet tech tree that you can compare to the IS-2. So the DPM is pretty nice and the alpha damage of 390 is as I already pointed out amazing and even the very solid 320 alpha damage of the T-29 cannot really compare to this great alpha damage. I mean that's the same alpha damage that many tier 10 medium tanks get and only 10 hit points less damage than say a T110E5 would deal so that's very impressive but the gun doesn't come without its drawbacks either and the first one is the penetration now 175 millimeters is actually not too bad 
in a tier 7 game, actually it's completely sufficient, but as soon as you start meeting tier 8, and especially tier 9 opponents, you'll notice that 175mm is just not enough to slice through the frontal armour of your opponents at those kind of tiers, and you will have to either flank them or use premium ammunition. Now, talking of premium ammunition, this is actually a real strong suit of the IS-2 because it gets high explosive anti-tank ammunition while the IS only gets APCR. And this heat ammunition gets 250 millimeters of penetration. That is amazing, that is tier 10 penetration. Obviously, you have to keep in mind that heat is not as effective when firing at spaced armor or through tracks and it also doesn't get very much normalization, so shooting at angled surfaces might not be the best idea either. But if you're just trying to, for example, slice through that tier 8 tank's turret, through that Ferdinand's frontal armor in a tier 8 or 9 game, then the heat comes in extremely handy and gives you a big edge over the IS that does not get that great penetration on its premium rounds. The rate of fire is 5.09, which is pretty bad, obviously, but that's to be expected with this kind of alpha damage. And actually, Considering that the alpha damage is that high at tier 7, an 11.8 second reload is actually not too bad and stacks up pretty competitively against the 10.9 seconds of the Type 29. Another great thing that is worth pointing out about this gun is its calibre of 122mm. At tier 7 that is a massive calibre and what that does is it helps you to overmatch armour a lot. If you think of it, you can overmatch 40mm of armour thickness with this gun. If you don't know what overmatching is, basically, if the calibre of your gun exceeds three times the armour thickness of the surface that it hits, then your bullet will penetrate no matter what the angle is of that armour. And that is very useful, especially when engaging lower tier vehicles. Oftentimes the IS-2 doesn't even have to aim necessarily at any weak spot or something, it can just slice through the armour no matter how it hits it in many cases. But obviously to do that effectively you need to kind of have a pretty good idea of all the armour thicknesses of most of the tanks in the game. One downside to these 122mm shells is their low shell velocity of 800m per second. It's not uh, terrible but it's definitely not great and is not very good for sniping. Now the Ammo capacity is also pretty mediocre at 28 rounds. Fair enough, the reload is very long, so you very seldomly run out of ammunition, but it does happen sometimes, and obviously, save a T29 or a Tiger or tanks like those with a huge ammo storage will never get into that kind of situation. But the bad news doesn't really stop there when we look at the gun because obviously this, having this huge alpha damage will have quite a few trade-offs and in this case the trade-offs are with the gun handling. So the T29 actually is not really famous for good gun handling but it looks like a real sniper compared to the IS-2 and the IS-2 gets a 3.26 second saving time, that's horrendous, 0.44 accuracy and terrible dispersions while on the move. So you need to take this tank up close, you cannot afford to snipe. I mean obviously sometimes if you have the time to wait those 3.26 seconds then you can try to pull up a snipe with this tank. Sometimes you will hit, sometimes you won't, but really this tank is definitely intended for close quarters, especially urban combat. And now comes the first stat where we actually have a significant difference to the Russian tank, and that is gun depression. The gun depression is only 5 degrees, that's 1 degree less than the IS, and obviously the Chinese are famous for having bad gun depression on their tanks. So this will mean that you won't be as good at working ridge lines as at the IS. And obviously the Americans with 10 degrees of gun depression just laugh at you. Fortunately though, the IS and the IS-2 are fairly mobile tanks. The IS-2 gets a top forward speed of 37 km an hour. That's almost best in class. Unfortunately though, the power to weight ratio is not very good at 12.67 and is noticeably worse than on the IS. Still, the IS-2 is not much less mobile than the IS and the reason for that is its good ground resistance. It gets better ground resistance on all kinds of terrain and actually for a heavy tank at tier 7 these are very very impressive so that kind of cancels out your weedy engine power and in the end you are a very very mobile heavy tank being able to easily reach those 37 kilometers an hour along flat terrain and the only issue is going up hills, 
you will definitely notice the worst power to weight ratio compared to the IS, but except for that, this tank is actually fairly nimble. At the first glance, the armor might not look too impressive and quite a bit worse actually than the IS's armor, but when we have a look at the IS2's model, we can see that the frontal armor is sloped pretty well compared to the IS, which has got more of a kind of a step-like armor profile. And this means that this surface of IS here is pretty flat and uh, can be penetrated a lot more easily actually than the IS2's frontal armor. So overall, the IS2's frontal armor actually is better than the IS's armor. The armor is not amazing, but it isn't bad either. It's, for example, better than the German's Tiger armor. And if you manage to angle your tank about like this, then you will have about 150 millimeters of frontal protection on your hull, and the turret is very, very strong. Unfortunately, next to the gun shield, the turret can be penetrated more easily if it's hit directly next to the gun shield, especially on this left side here. And uh, that can be penetrated pretty easily by tier 7 and above tanks. So mostly the armour is effective against lower tier vehicles and you shouldn't rely on your armour when facing equally or higher tiered opponents. But still, it could be a lot worse. Obviously, you've got a pretty big weak spot at the cupola and your side armour though is not too bad really. So you can definitely use that to side scrape and to angle your tank and that's a pretty big big advantage for this vehicle. The view range is unfortunately quite disappointing at 350 meters, again putting an emphasis on the close quarters combat nature of this vehicle. So overall we can say that the IS-2 and IS both got their strengths and weaknesses, but overall I'd probably even prefer the IS-2, the reason being that that heat ammo is just so much better than the IS's premium ammunition and can really give you edge in higher tier engagements. But of course it also depends on whether you can afford that heat ammunition because it is quite expensive and if you cannot afford premium ammo then probably the IS will be a better choice for you. Actually in today's review I want to try out a new feature so please let me know in the comments what you think about it and this feature will be showcasing the uh, hit zones of a tank. I've got special hit zone videos on my channel as well but I figured I could just as well implement hit zones in my reviews as well. So this will be showcasing modules uh, crew member and just weak spots in the armor so you know how to better take out this tank and also know how to protect yourself when you're driving it. So frontally we can see that uh, especially the cupola and the lower glacis have got weak armor but if you want to hit the driver then you can just fire beneath the gun basically and if you penetrate you'll take the driver out. From the side we can see that you can hit the commander gunner and loader in the sides of the turret and also you can hit the fuel tanks when you fire just right behind the turret on the hull. From the rear obviously it will be a auto pen most of the time it's however important to note that if you want to take out the ammo rack then you have to hit the right side of the turret from the rear not the left side and also the engine is only vulnerable in the lower part of the upper rear glacius, so uh, make sure to aim there when you're engaging this vehicle. And from the other side, you can see from the right side of the tank, actually, the engine is a lot easier to hit with some of the uh, shots going through the tracks, taking out the engine as well, and also the ammo rack kind of goes round the side of the turret a bit here, so just take care to hit that when you are engaging this vehicle from the right side. So please let me know in the comments if you think I should keep on implementing this feature in reviews. I think it's actually pretty useful because it's something that you do not really think about too often, but if you would think about it when you're engaging a tank like this, then it can really help you to do a lot more module and crew damage when penetrating this vehicle. Before we head into some gameplay, I'm gonna quickly give you some advice on crew skills, equipment and ammo loadout. For ammo, I take it 1882 loadout, but I think it kind of depends on whether you really want the HE or not. I like the HE because recently there have been quite a few lightly armored vehicles introduced into the game, especially the new German tier 8 and tier 7 premium tank destroyers. So I like taking that HE just in case I engage one of those to boost my DPM. Then I take 8 heat ammo and 18 APCR and then just the standard first aid kit, repair kit and fire extinguisher 
for consumables. For crew skills, I would definitely just rush for brothers in arms on all your crew members because the reload and gun handling is so horrendous that you really need every little bit that helps with kind of getting a grip on those stats. Then, six cents is always nice to have. Obviously, repairs would be great on the entire crew, and safe storage is to be recommended on this tank because the ammo rack seems to be pretty vulnerable actually. After having repairs on gun and drive, you definitely, definitely want to have snapshot on your gunner and smooth ride on your driver because the gun handling is just so bad on this vehicle that uh, you really really need to get a grip on that and then for the commander also actually i think jack of all, all trades would be pretty useful because i get the impression that this tank is pretty prone to crew members getting injured in it for equipment, unfortunately, we cannot mount a vertical stabilizer on this vehicle. This tank would profit immensely from a vertical stabilizer. So instead of getting a vertical stabilizer, just get vents, tank gun rammer, and the GLD. The GLD is obviously to improve your gun handling, the tank gun rammer to get better DPM, and you get vents for the same reason as you want to get brothers in arms. So I've been babbling on for quite enough now in the garage I reckon, so let's head out to the battlefield and see how this tank performs in some real action. So we have spawned on Ensk, which is probably the best map in the game for this tank, and we've also probably got the best matchup you could hope for. A tier 7 game with very very many tier 8 and tier 5 tanks and this is the kind of environment where the IS-2 really excels in because you do not have to try to flank your enemies, your armour is somewhat useful and uh, you can penetrate most opponents. Now this position I took here just for a second is actually something I really like to do when I spawn on Ensk because you can try to get shots in at enemy tanks that are kind of trying to go over to the right or left flank of the, t of the map and are kind of going over the railway tracks and you can oftentimes get shots to their sides so it didn't work out that time and the IS-2 probably isn't the best vehicle in the game to do that due to its terrible accuracy and aim time but uh, if you kind of pre-aim it can work all the same so it's just kind of it's something you can do every game and it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't but it's not really a very big risk you take, if you take any at all, and uh, the reward can be pretty significant. Especially because you also get information, you spot your enemies as well. Anyway, uh, although we spawned on Encounter, where most vehicles go to the right side, I've actually decided to go to the town. Now, why do I go to the left flank of the map? First of all, I think that the kind of more densely... Uh, urbanized area here I guess this kind of house to house close quarters combat is better for me than over on the more open eastern flank and another thing is that I hope to kind of push through here very aggressively very quickly and then loop round and get the rear of the opponents on the eastern flank that's something I try to do very often in my IS2 because of the kind of mediocre penetration of course in this kind of a matchup it's not that significant but still it can really help to kind of negate that disadvantage if you can get the sides of the rear of the enemy. Anyway, right there you could see how easily the IS-2 can just brutalize its enemies with that amazing alpha damage. And we've already taken the town. Unfortunately, the enemies seem to be breaking through our eastern flank. So instead of looping around, I'm going to just kind of make a beeline more or less for our enemies because I realized that basically if I drive round, I won't be able to uh, meet them in time to uh, to take them out effectively. So right there you can see what the IS-2 does to, uh, you know, uh, light vehicles that uh, find themselves in front of its gun, they just get destroyed completely. And that's something that the IS is really good at, is when it hits lightly armoured vehicles at close range, that's exactly what you want to do in the IS-2. Now, Right here, uh, against the SU-12244, I do not want to stay in the open because the SU-12244 has got way better reload time than me. So instead what I do is I come around the corner, I get a really lucky high roll there, and uh, that's just what this gun can do, this 122 gun. I mean, it's kind of a very unique playstyle, I guess you have to kind of like. I mean, I adore these kind of guns, but I've got monstrous alpha damage and are just completely random. Uh, but obviously there are people who 
prefer to play tanks like the Leopard 1, the AMX 30, the E50M with laser-like accuracy and just find these tanks to be purely trollish and not much fun, but that's just a question of taste, I guess. Anyway, I realise now that I have to kind of drive in closer because, again, you never really want to keep the engagement at close range when you're using the IS-2 and a lot of the time what you have to do is you often you do, don't have the time to completely aim your shots. Remember, the aim time of this tank is uh, something like 3.3 .3 seconds, I believe. So really, when you, uh, for example, pop around the corner, you oftentimes just have to take a snapshot without aiming completely. And obviously that's a risk, but sometimes you just have to take into account that you'll miss some of your shots and some will hit and that's just something you have to do. Now, I managed to pick up my top gun, I was really glad to do that, and there are still two enemy tanks in the game, so, uh, you know, there's a Radley Walters medal here, but up for grabs, but the Cromwell's on the other side of the map, so, uh, yeah, that's fairly unlikely, but uh, I'm going to pick that up now. Uh, anyway, I suspect that the SU-152 will have made its way over to the northern end of the map as well to support its ally, so I get into position here, and sure enough, there the SU-152 is. He kind of drives like a bit of a turd, so I fire a shot, and right there you can see exactly why you don't want to use this tank here at lo uh, long range, because the accuracy is simply horrendous. You can see the SU-152 hasn't even spotted me yet. Very bad view range on that Tier 7 Soviet tank destroyer. I take a shot and immediately angle my armor to bounce the SU-152's incoming shell, and that again showcased the very nice armor angling capabilities of the IS-2 being able to deflect that shot. Unfortunately, my last shot didn't quite hit my target in time, but still I think this replay really showcased the strengths and weaknesses of IS-2 very good. Uh, obviously, you try to get into these kind of situations in close quarters urban combat, in areas where there aren't many undulations in the ground without any hills, where your bad gun depression doesn't really matter too much, and where you can just put that brutal 122 millimeter to good work and annihilate especially lower tiered opponents so let's have a quick look at the post game stats then i give you my summary and final opinion on this vehicle so we got a ace tanker medal for that game obviously the top gun a high caliber and this is what happens when you get the is2 into this kind of an amazing environment 59,000 credits 6,100 experience and a bunch of latter medals we finished obviously top on our team by experience 1358 base xp and uh, dealt 3758 damage which was more than any other tank in the game actually we fired 13 shots which 11 hit and 11 penetrated and that is because we managed to get this vehicle into close quarters engagements and the shots that we missed, we missed at long range. So that's really the lesson you can learn here is never ever, if you can possibly avoid it, get this vehicle into long range engagements. What can work is if you are uh, kind of far away from the front line still and an enemy vehicle is spotted and you have the time to zero in on them, those 3.3 .3 seconds that it takes, and then take the shot, then definitely go ahead but it's kind of uh, it's not something that you should be seeking to do especially in this tank you should definitely try to get this tank up into the front line of course when you are not top tier then you cannot just drive up and uh, engage enemies front on then you have to kind of wait for the top tier heavy tanks on your team to engage the enemies and kind of tank their shots for you and then when the enemies are distracted you can kind of try to loop around them with your very decent mobility and get their sides and rear and then try to take them out you kind of have to play more of an assassin kind of role in that kind of scenario so anyway the is2 what do I think of this vehicle? Well, for me, it's an absolute blast to play. I love this kind of tank with uh, huge raw alpha damage, just the sheer brutality of this vehicle. But really, it comes down to personal preference. If you like this kind of RNG type playstyle with pretty high risk, but pretty high reward, then the IS-2 will be exactly what you're looking for. 
but if you prefer sniping, if you prefer controlling the engagement at long range and playing rather safe without kind of going all in, then the IS-2 is definitely not your tank because you really have to take it all the way if you're playing this tank and just risk everything basically. And if you do and it works out, then the experience is amazing. So anyway, the IS-2 for me personally, a great tank compared to the IS, it's got its pros and cons. Both tanks are kind of even, I'd say, with both having the edge in some regard or another. So thanks for watching as usual. I hope you enjoyed. If this video was helpful or entertaining, at least to you guys, please leave a like or even subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate that a lot. And uh, I'll see you in my next video or maybe even on the battlefield. Goodbye.